All right, moving with epithelial tissue. I'm just going to give an overview of its functions. Let me switch back to blank here. Epithelial lines, cavities, like the stomach and the lumen. So it lines, cavities, and passageways. Inside the body, as well as covering the external surfaces. such as the cutaneous membrane. You probably know as the skin. Epithelial tissue is avascular. That might surprise you to know that the outermost layer of your skin is avascular, but you can Certainly imagine that sometimes when you get a paper cut, you don't bleed, but it does hurt. So it does have pain receptors. It just may not have blood vessels at the level at which you have cut it. So avascular means no blood supply or no blood vessels and no lymphatics. Remember, epi means to be above, E-P-I does have nerve endings. Again, if you get a paper cut, you know this. Don't have to bleed for it to hurt. So conversely, you do feel light touch, meaning that not everything with the skin is painful. Epithelial tissue rests on a basement membrane. This is very important to categorizing epithelial tissue. All epithelial tissue rests on a basement membrane. You kind of think of that as what it's attached to, just like a house sits on a basement, if it has one. All epithelial tissue cells have nuclei. So these two things are very important. There's a basement membrane and a nucleus. The last characteristic of epithelial cell uh, tissue is that when we talk about it, we base it, we base our categories of epithelial tissue on shape. So on the shape and the number of layers. And very simply, for instance, the shape might be cuboidal and there might be two layers of cuboidal cells stacked on top of each other. So here's a little singular cuboidal cell sitting on a basement membrane, and here are two. We might also have a mm, sort of a flat looking cell, and then we could add other flat looking cells on top. And now we've changed the number of layers from one to many. And we'll see that there's names for those things. So shape, the number of layers, as well as the qualifications that it rests on a basement membrane and has a nuclei. Let's look at one more thing about epithelial cells that's important. It's just a way to understand how we talk about them in terms of directions. And so when we're thinking about directions of epithelial cells, you might and wondering if we're talking about north and south or east and west, but really let's talk about a 
except we have a cell in front of us, and so I'm just going to draw a little epithelial cell here. Just a little happy epithelial cell hanging out, doing its daily business, right? And we'll say that this little epithelial cell is sitting on a basement membrane, which it's attached to. So let's call that the basement membrane. You'll see this turns into other words as we go here. So we've got this little, I've just got it in one dimension. And we've got the sides of the cell. So the sides would be the lateral surface. And of course, this bottom part touching the basement membrane would be the basal surface. Kind of sounds like the word basement membrane, doesn't it? So basal surface. And this surface here, this top portion that's facing out into, say, a lumen, is called the apical surface, which comes from the word apex. You could also call this the free surface, meaning it's not touching anything. Where does apical come from? We think about the idea of a mountain peak. So I've got a mountain. There's some snow on top of the mountain and some little clouds here. This is a mountain. This is the apex or the highest point of the mountain. And notice it's not touching anything. It's a free surface. Right, so this would be the base of the mountain where one would set up base camp. We could turn this into a more relevant to anatomy and phys. I'll just draw a human heart. Of course, this is not what the human heart looks like, but we can all recognize this as a heart. And in this case, we would say that the apex of the heart was here. You might hear about apical beats later as you move into clinical studies. But the apex would be at the bottom of the heart, in this case, because that's the free surface. It points downward towards the left lung. So the apex of the heart is the tip, and then the base. Oops. The base of the heart is this upper wide portion that is where the heart is attached to the body. You can see it just really is an upside down mountain. So those are the things we need to know about epithelial cells. Let's make a note of that. So this is all epithelial. We need to be aware that we have an apical surface, a basement membrane. Usually know there's a basal surface, a lateral surface, that the apical is the same thing as a free surface or the top of the cell. And we can equate that if, uh, with a clinical correlation here with the heart. We could think, well, the apex of the heart faces uh, or is, beats freely. So the point is over in the left thoracic cavity. And then the base of the heart is up at the, what we would call the top, where the heart is actually attached uh, to the body. Okay, all right.